Moving on to the first story, enjoy your beach trip trick. In 2017, I began a new job on the opposite side of my huge metropolis. Rather than drive from where I was currently living and spend at least 90 minutes driving each way, I chose to relocate closer to my new workplace. I could have gotten a one-bedroom apartment on my own, but my budget at the time would have barely covered it. I'm a 20-something single man who enjoys going out. Order in. Sure, I could have had my own place, but I would have spent most of my time eating ramen and staying at home. So in March 2017, I leased a two-bedroom apartment and began looking for a roommate. Logan, a nice person, contacted me. We seemed to click, and he moved in. I have a pickup truck, so I helped him go acquire furniture, and he helped me transfer my SA to the new location. We got along wonderfully. We were similar enough that we shared interests, but different enough that we could have interesting debates. Everything was fine. We would split the cost of items such as toilet paper and dish soap. Neither of us was a complete slob, but we weren't whiny little bees who would whine about a filthy glass left in the sink overnight. In the meantime, my employment was going well. Within six months, I received a promotion and a significant rise. Logan told me he was leaving on November 1st, 2017. I probably should have just covered the apartment myself till the lease ended on February 28th, 2018, but I made a mistake. Let's call the error bro, because that's what he called everyone else. Bro. Logan's Weed Connect had visited the apartment several times and wanted a place to stay. He appeared to have his esche together and was charming and well-groomed. Logan moved out and bro moved in at the beginning of November. Trouble started soon after. He was vain, constantly sporting perfectly cut blonde hair, excellent clothes, and 500 sneakers. That was where all of his money went. He did not purchase food or anything else. I'd buy a loaf of bread, and the next day there was only one-fourth of it left. I'd go to take a poo, but there was no paper. I used to have a large jar of peanut butter in the cupboard. It vanished. I would give him SH and tell him to go purchase his own items. Okay, no issue, man. However, nothing changed. He didn't even own a cell phone. Actually, he did, but he never used it. He couldn't get a plan because his account was unpaid, so he used a pay-as-you-go plan and relied on WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger to communicate with people, including his Wii buyers. How much do you believe he contributed to the internet bill? Rent was always late and never in one lump, and he was a total slob who never cleaned dishes or wiped anything down. I do not think he even understood how to spell mop. I was becoming increasingly irritated, and we eventually had a heated confrontation soon before Christmas 2017. I basically informed him that if he didn't stop using my stuff and start doing his own work, he'd be in trouble. Then, and I quote, SJ is going to happen, and you will not like it. The final straw came when I cooked a bunch of cookies and other goodies to take with me to my family's Christmas gathering. I told him not to touch the food in the fridge, and he ate roughly one third of it. Now I'm effing enraged, and I'm coming for you. Bro was thrilled to be visiting Costa Rica for a week in February. One of his friend's parents owned a condo there, and Bro and three pals planned a week-long stay. They were free to party, and I overheard their intentions. I spent a lot of time in my room playing video games with Bro and his friends. I have a nice headset, so they must have assumed I was playing instead of listening through the paper-thin walls. One of the things they intended to do was transport some drugs back home. Well, it's time for the journey and to exact my revenge. Here we go. Bro and his friends were going on Saturday morning. I informed Bro that I would be out of town, so he would need to arrange for his own transportation to the airport, but that I would pick him up. He gave me the flight number for his return flight. I had a couple Cokes in the fridge and a chocolate cake that I had taken a few slices of. There were some Doritos and Oreos in the cupboard. I warned him again not to touch my Eshe. Bro was out of the house on Friday, so I packed every clean product in a bag. Every soap, dish soap, vinegar, cleanser, 
and more. All of it. Did I mention that bro will be using my stuff? This includes both my shampoo and body wash. I use Irish Spring Body Wash, which is a vivid emerald green gel. So before leaving, I added two containers of green food coloring to the bottle and returned it to the shower. Did I mention bro's light complexion? Then I logged onto the router's admin panel and filtered the MAK dress down to my three pounds, phone, and desktop, thus keeping him out of the internet. Saturday morning, my phone began to blow up. Bro took a shower before departing for the airport and received more than he anticipated when he used my Irish spring as usual. I wish I had seen it. He lost his sh asterisk, calling me every name in the book and threatening to kick my A when he returned. But there is more. When I returned home on Sunday, the apartment was a complete catastrophe. Clearly he had guests over and they had drunk all of my cokes and eaten all of my snacks. That's when I finally responded to him via WhatsApp. He contacted me immediately and began raving and screaming into the phone, terrified that he was effing green and it wouldn't wash off. No beach or pool. Calling me an effing hole, asking how I could do this to him, etc. I basically informed him that if he continues to use my SH, something bad will happen, and he wouldn't be in this problem if he wasn't an effing thief. Then I told him to be grateful and thank me. Thank you. What are you thanking me for? Thank you for not filling the cake with laxatives as I had planned. On Tuesday, I texted him. Bro, the cops were looking for you. What? What for? I don't know, brother. They simply wanted to know where you were. What have you told them? You were in Costa Rica, but were flying back on Sunday afternoon. He was unaware that there were no cops present. He only knows that they may have been waiting for him when he arrived, and that if he was detected transporting drugs, he would face serious consequences. So there went his suitcase plans as well as his plans to pay for his vacation. On Friday, I informed him that I would be unable to pick him up at the airport, but did not explain why. I had given my notice and surrendered the unit. I spent the entire week packing up everything I owned. I actually owned the furniture in Bro's room, but I didn't want it, so I walked into his room, threw his stuff on the floor, and dragged it to the dumpster. I sliced the mattress, kicked the dresser and bedside table to matchsticks, and also the couch and chairs. Then I emptied the place. Every cup, plate, knife, and fork had either been discarded or moved. I did keep one tiny pot, but I bored a hole in the bottom to demonstrate my point. I took the shower head. I took the shower curtain. I removed the shower curtain rings. I emptied the place. Logan later told me that bro had arrived in Costa Rica with very little money, and what little he did have was quickly depleted. He was mooching off of the others, and they quickly grew tired of bro. Whatever rage they felt over bro's greening was quickly subdued once they discovered his actual nature. I'm not sure how he got back from the airport, but he called me on Sunday and was freaking out about the apartment. Where is my bed, man? Where is my furniture? What furniture? All of that was mine, and I didn't want it anymore. What the hell, guy, did I ever do to you? Aside from stealing my essay, not doing your part, and screwing me over on rent and bills, what do you mean? Now I have to sleep on the ground. F you a hole. No, bro, F you. I just wanted to let you know I did you a favor. You now have less S to relocate. Better start looking for a new place to live, because the building management will change the locks on Wednesday morning. Then I blocked, bro. I never heard from him again. But Logan said he cup surfed for a few weeks before disappearing. Probably moved out of town. Who knows? Good riddance. The next story is condescending. D ish vegan trying to get takeout? When you arrive home, eat something that isn't vegan. I've never believed in the stereotype of the arrogant, holier than thou vegan. I assumed it was a fabrication of omnivores who enjoy mocking vegans and projecting a judgmental attitude onto them. Then I met her. She entered this great Asian fusion restaurant, which does carry. She was speaking with a buddy, and the crux of the conversation was that she was shocked 
that she was even in this place. The dinner wasn't even vegan because it had beef. In fact, within the 10 minutes I knew her, she had nothing positive to say about anyone or anything. It was very amazing listening to one individual utter nothing positive for 10 minutes. She might win gold at the Olympics. I stood in line, patiently waiting to place an order, with one person ahead of me. As she stepped in, that person completed ordering, and she walked right past me as if I didn't exist. I want a tofu lo mein. The woman behind the counter looked at me, so I coughed nicely. I apologize, I was here first. This elicited the biggest, most dare you waste my time eye roll I've ever seen, and she stepped back without saying anything. I ordered chicken fried rice, she got tofu lo mein, and we stepped back to wait for our meals. Ten minutes later, the first order appeared, and this woman, mindlessly chatting with her friend about how much someone they both knew was a complete idiot, swiped the order without thinking, without a thank you, and stormed out the door, desperate to ruin other people's evening somewhere. My initial thinking was, isn't it likely that my order will be completed before yours? And I nearly said it. And then I noticed she was storming out with the meals she did not want. The next meal appeared around two minutes later. I took it, knowing there was a good possibility it was tofu, thanked the nice woman behind the counter, and left without opening it, fearing that if I waited a second, the irate shrew would storm back in and remedy her mistake. I joyfully ate a tofu lo mein munch home that night. So I ate the lo mein and picked at the tofu. I'm not sure if that harpy returned, demanding her exact supper, or she simply arrived home, realized it was chicken fried rice, and threw it away dejected. I hope she suffered some of the agony she appeared to relish inflicting on those around her. The final scenario has Eshe employers being pleasantly pleased when I depart. Okay, so I work for a tiny family medical practice. My first job out of school, I was always eager to do right by my patients. These bosses only wanted to make money. There was little care for the personal, who dropped like flies, or the patients, who were always angry. Instead of caring about the patients' problems, they spent more time micromanaging personnel, even installing timers on our laptops and a GPS program on our phones that served as a punch clock. Managers were also instructed to check security cameras to ensure that everyone was working hard. We didn't have our own workspaces, and taking breaks or listening to music was not permitted. If we had time to be humans, we couldn't have worked hard enough. The owners never spent money. They didn't purchase paper towels. Our bathrooms did not contain soap. We didn't have any water or cups. There were no coffee or break rooms. People ate lunch alone in their cars due to a lack of room and utensils. We also had to pay for our training because they offered to cover it, but then made it difficult to be reimbursed. But that's only the beginning. They also compromised patient safety and privacy. They were too cheap to purchase masks for providers when patients with diseases such as tuberculosis arrived. When I inquired about this, they responded that I was acting childishly. Finally, they'd required providers to utilize personal computers for patient data chores, which was a serious HIPAA violation. When I brought it up again, they said I was mistaken. By the way, these are the identical personal computers that they have timers on. Now for the fun part. One of the owner's most cherished employees was pregnant. The owners planned a celebration for her, but did not spend any money. How would they accomplish it? They knew I had an excellent relationship with pharmaceutical reps. I just so happened to have one arrive on Monday. The baby shower was scheduled for Friday. Now, pharmaceutical salesmen frequently bring lunch and teach everyone about the latest medicine. They also delivered samples and discounts to the patients. The cheap owners devised a wonderful plan. Postponed the baby shower to Monday so that the pharmaceutical representative could provide lunch for everyone and they wouldn't have to buy it. They even advised me to change my order from my typical chick filler to a nice vegetarian restaurant because they were vegetarian. I ended up resigning the day before. 
the medication rep contacted my cell phone and inquired about the lunch. He realized it was a baby shower and thought it was strange. I agreed and cancelled the lunch, but I did not notify the owners. I wish I could see their expressions when free food was not available. Two more employees resigned a day or two after I left, and more will likely follow. I also reported them to the Board of Health under High BAA. Their day will arrive soon. I'm currently unemployed and taking my time looking for the perfect fit. I thought small, family-owned was the way to go. But at this point, I'm considering moving to a larger company with a specialty.